All right, I have a sense of the core skeleton of the creature now. Put that breastplate back on and then put the arms in front of it in the right places. by controlling the layer order. All right, so now I've got all those different hands on the different arms, chest plate on the body with the shell, all that good stuff. All of that's in my body layer. And then some alternative things that I may or may not use. like these spikes. Those spikes are fun. Okay, so all of that's there in the body layer. I, If I know there are certain layers I'm not gonna use, I can just get rid of them. but I can always just keep them turned off as well. And you can really kind of organize all your components with these group layers, these groups of layers. Looking at the big picture, I've got the head up here. The head was composited much bigger. So now I can take that whole thing and scale it down, control T. But you wouldn't put an engine into the chassis of the car without cleaning up its edges, right? So before I connect it, let me just move it out to the side here on the gray so I can see it clearly. Whoops. Take off auto select, so I'm just doing the whole head. Now let's clean this up a little bit because I'm getting a sense of how it's going to work. But that's going to go there. I've got a tail. It's not a great tail, not particularly interesting. And I don't have anything from the axolotl yet. So let's see what else I might want to use. So the the best reference I found that could work for that, for the tail, is this. It's kind of slug-like reference. So I'll flip that horizontally. And I'll rough cut it out. And it does look very tail-like. I'll duplicate it and then I'll delete the source. Then I might try auto tone on it under image. Auto tone is just a shortcut for, for levels and hue and color balance, but sometimes it, it gets a little bit wrong. I don't want it that yellow, so I'm going to shift the color balance myself, get it back to slightly more neutral. So it's under neutral lighting. And then I'm going to play with placing it and warping it with Command-T. First, I'll scale it smaller. Then I'll warp it to curve it a little bit. I like that kind of thick belly of it. It's kind of gross. And it's okay if I go beyond the edges of my sketch a little. Yeah, so maybe something like this as a possible tail. 
And then I'm going to play with levels a little bit just to get a little bit more contrast like I did for the shell. Darken those midtones. Limit the highlights a little. And of course, I'll have dodge and burn as a tool as well to fix it. All right. So now if I turn off my sketch, you can kind of see those components of the body all coming together. And then the feet, the feet aren't quite right. And that might be something I need to find reference for. Or maybe I can use my dog for that. Feet are always the hardest thing to find. So these are some nice feet. I can just steal one as is. They're nice and big and easy to select. So duplicate that and then I can steal the other one. Even though these are front paws, I can use them as the back feet on my creature. They're on two separate layers. And I'll show you one way we can clean up. When our source material is really strong, like these feet, I can immediately do kind of auto tone. I can play with the, the levels. But when it's just a simple background like this, I can just use the magic wand with a regular tolerance and contiguous and select it out. And then I can do this little trick where while it's still selected, I can go to my lasso And I can just push it one way and delete. And because I'm on the lasso, it's going to feather it by two pixels. Push it the other way and delete just a little bit. Just getting rid of that, those little, little nibs of black, right? So that's not perfectly cut out, but it's pretty clean for the moment. Clean enough, certainly, for me to transform it and try it as a foot. All right, with lots of overlap. So there's one nice big foot. Let's do it with the other. Select it, then switch to the lasso tool with two pixel feather. Nudge it a little bit to one side. Nudge it a little bit to the other side. And we get to use the feather to soften those black edges. Then transform it. And that's a way we can feather a, se a selection with the magic wand without having to use a clipping mask. Move that foot in front. It might be fun to distort it a little bit or warp it a little bit so it's a little bit narrower at the top. But I do want to keep in mind the anatomy that's already there on the squirrel, right? There'll be a lot of erasing done there to line it up. And then I'll play with the anatomy or the, uh, the warping of this foot as well, just to get it to line up. There we go. So even though they're, they're both very different colors, the fact that they're both fur, that's going to be helpful and it stands out a little bit. Okay, so we've cleaned up the feet. Now I'm going to use those same kind of principles to clean up the head. 
That's foot. That's foot. That's foot. What is this? Oh, that's the squirrel tail, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I need the squirrel tail. Okay. So I'm going to put these into a group and just call them feet. And then I've got the tail just as... Now I find it really helpful to, to label my layers and to label my groups, especially when you're working with a lot of layers. Now I'm going to clean up my head a little bit. I have my sketch turned off so it just doesn't muddle, but it's still there. And before I clean up my head, it's a good time now to crop down because I don't need all that extra space, especially because my Photoshop is running a little bit slow. So I'm not cropping super close, but saving a lot of extra space. Okay. Now, how do I clean up this head? I'm saving my work. I'm gonna open up the layers in the group and I'm gonna work just like you did on your landscape from the, the background layer on forward. So this is my second layer. And what I'm gonna start with is a 100% eraser, 100% opacity, soft edged eraser. And you can use a stylus, you can use your mouse. The stylus can work a little bit faster because you can have a larger size and be pressure sensitive, which is nice. And I already know my eyes getting replaced, so I can get rid of that right away. I know I want this beak to show. But then as I get closer to the actual feathers, I can use smaller and smaller strokes or a smaller and smaller eraser brush. I can zoom in too and start transitioning these elements. But most important thing is to get rid of that hard edge around these feathers. Feathers themselves are not hard edged. So they shouldn't feel that way. Okay, and then next. Now this I can go soft, but I have some hard textures here. So for the hard textures, I can find their outline with my lasso and just cut right to them. Sometimes you want the shadow that they cast. Now this area, you see how it's already losing some focus. This is a very uh, narrow focus range photo of this goose's head. That allows me to just soft transition into that that furry feather texture from the mandarin duck underneath. And then if I want to be careful in my erasing, I can mask it with my lasso. I'll be right there, Mason. 
give myself a little 